Hello everyone, this is Darwell20, and welcome to episode 59 of Darwell20's Let's Play series, uh, where I just finished making my first induction cell and induction provider. These things were expensive, I ain't gonna lie. Uh, needing and close to 3,000 redstone and a couple thousand gold and tons of iron, which we're also a little bit low on, but we had enough. Now, do we have enough for the induction casings? <laughs> no, maybe, couldn't tell you. Uh, so we're going to need to form, base, I like to have a 3x3 three three internal area for these, so that would mean a 5x5x5 five by five by five external, right? So if I wanted that, it would be 5 is 25, and 25 is 50, and then the walls would be 15, 15, 9, and 9. Am I visualizing that right? So 30 and 18 is 48, plus 50 is 98. Did I math that right? Eh, maybe. Look who needs more gold, though. So remember, 98 for the walls. That's what we need is 98 for the walls. Now, how, how'd this guy make out over here? I'm pretty sure he mined up all the redstone and gold in this area. Um, but if I config him, I wouldn't mind adding a new tag for iron okay uh and then run oh wow we have a lot of iron a lot of iron look at all the iron oh yeah goodbye iron hello iron for me i'm gonna let this mine up all the iron here then pop over to uh a different spot and mine up some more golden redstone and iron for that matter all right now that this guy's all Done. Zoinks. We break, we break, we break. And then we go 32-ish blocks away. Well, 64, right? Because it does a 32 block radius, so you want to go 64 technically, right? So if we're at like 150 here, let's just go to like 75-ish. That should be fine. You don't have to be perfect with this, but also like kind of be a little bit smart about it because you're going to be, you know... Clearing out a big overworldy type place. And what I might do is move this forward one so that this time we're not overlapping chunks. That would be smart. Okay. Uh, so then you go back down. Yoinks. And then you go back down. And then you go back down. And then you reset the configs remain, which is the best part of this. And then we hit start. And now we're getting redstone again and gold and whatever else. What I might even do is remove iron because we just got a ton of iron and I really want the golden red zone. Uh, and then what I will also sometimes do is chunk load it so that I can go home and that'll just run and do its thing. Now are you also running still and getting lots of junk? You are. So let's turn you off for a minute. Now you're just getting gold and redstone. Perfect. Uh, seeing that continue to be gotten is the best. And I'm going to manually throw a little bit of iron in here, which is a smart way to get iron and, or I'm sorry, gold cooking up so that we're ready to make the 98 of these that I think I need. Available 46. Let's go. That's probably not a good idea, but meh. Yay! It's good, right? And we're also going to want at least two ports, so cook those up as well. And we'll be back when it's done. Boy, do we have a lot of ores to process. Oh, we have a lot of copper. Oh, boy, do we have a lot of copper. <laughs> anyway, let's make our induction stuff, shall we? So with the 98 plus 2 casing... Uh, and this stuff. We might be cool. What I was thinking is we probably don't need none of this no more. Eh? Eh. Now, this whole setup here might be a little tricky to replicate, but we'll see what we can do. Uh, and in the meantime, I mean, I would like you to just kind of chill here, maybe in the wall. Now, I was going to do 5 by 5 by th yeah, That's a lot. That's pretty big. It's a pretty big exterior. 
That's a pretty big exterior. This will probably shut down the entire world that I have going on, but that's so dokie smoky. Uh, maybe I wanted to keep that pipe there. Let's put away... Oh, yeah, no wireless transmitter in range. Let's keep you running with the plug on the front still. That should bring everybody back online, yeah? Or is that the front? That's the front. That brings us all back. Ha! <laughs> But yeah, we probably want this and this and this. And I probably don't need you no mores. I don't think. Now you guys all want power. Right? So that's going to be a flux point for generators. Cool. And you're going to be extracting there. And uh, I guess I'll throw a basic up there. Yeah, if we ever need more than that, we'll manage it at the time. Uh, you send energy. So you could be a flux plug. on the generators network. Does that sound cool? So that now when you're running, you'll just energy direct and that's it. That sounds cool to me. Uh, and then we might be able to, if I'm not mistaken too much. Now, are you in my way? One, two, three, four, five. You're kind of in my way. We probably want you to remain still. We probably want you to remain still. And then we want... Pressurized tube and mechanical pipe can go away. And you want extract and you back to this and that's pretty cool. All right, so that should have everybody kind of groovy again and we might be able to fit this here. So let's see, five. Yeah, you're still in the way. Well, actually, I don't think I needed that. Well, I liked the idea of it here. We'll have to see if it fits. Because currently it does not. Currently, it does not. Yeah, so you're getting power and energy for that matter. Did you guys all have energy going on over here? I think you all did, right? You're probably not running because power? Yes, correct. Now, was there a reason that I had this node and a tank? I'm not actually sure. But let's put the node here and see. So if I snagged you... And you had an extract. Yes. Um, actually, I should probably move you to here with the tank here, and you with the extracting, and you with the inserting. That works. Yeah, that seems fine to me. Now this whole mess down here could use a flux plug or point. And that might be where I want to insert my advanced pipe upgrade. So you're doing 5,000 RF a tick and that's refilling all your buffers. Nice. Ish. We're getting there. Is that all you can do? Because you say you can do 32,000, so why are you only transferring 5,000? Right? 
Maybe that's all they're trying to pull? I don't know. Seems like they're mostly running those, so they should all fill up their back stuff at some point soon. Well. They're getting gummed up a little bit. But I guess they'll get there? Yeah, no, I think they're okay. Alright, so that's connected and working again. Let's get this built out. And now we find out if Dyer can math. Okay. So then... We do that. And... We fill in the walls. And on the inside of the induction cell is where we get to build all these lovely little toys. Now, technically, I could have made this a little bit smaller. Uh, and technically, that would mean that we don't have enough room inside this thing to do all the cool stuff I want to do. But my math was correct, so I feel pretty good about that. Um, so for the induction ports, we'll deal with that in a sec. But all I'm going to put in here for now is one induction cell and one induction provider. Boom and boom. Okay, now with those two placed, I get to place this. And now we have 1.60 trillion R of a tick. Not bad. Um, and then if I wanted to, I could simply say this and this. And if we did this and this. Now, do I need to change this guy? I forget. I can never remember if I have to configurate him or not. Output, input. So I want this to be my output. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this guy, and he can input. And what we should be now getting is energy, right? Uh, does it tell me input? 114,000 RF a tick. Not bad. And if I take this guy, because I'm assuming my power is about to run out over here. Yep, he sure is. Now he's not. Sweet. So now we can see our input is 114,000 RF a tick. Our output is 13-ish thousand RF a tick. And what I can do is I can make sure my limits are bypassed for both of these. So we want to make sure that you never limit inputs or outputs. Okay. So that is pretty cool. And then you, sir, could probably go on to the generators network. Well, maybe I'll just hang on to you as like... And in case of emergency, I've got power thing going on. All right, so I'll let him fill up all the way. And that works for me. Sweet. All right, so I shouldn't need you no more. Is, uh, what we do want to make sure we don't forget. Yoink. Not inside the thing, you doofus. Um, let's make sure that the lava is connected to the lava. Where's this guy? Nope, not it. Nope, not it. Shrink? Nah, we'll just dig. Not that, though. Don't dig that. Did I not have energy cards when I built this? I'm assuming I didn't. It's kind of funny to see the progression of my series and my own mod and see, like, what things I built before I had a certain access to an item and what things I, you know, didn't. Uh, so this is the fluid. So... You should not be connected to any of these shenanigans. So I should be able to connect you over to here, though it might be too far. Nope, we're good actually. Sweet. So now if I were to get a bucket, just clarifying that this still works. 5,000, boom. That's cool. That's cool. All right, I'm happy with that. I'm very happy with that. So now we have a giant and by giant, I mean giant energy storage, right? Basic pipe upgrade. Um, don't really need that no more. I don't think we need the power monitor and stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. So we have 500 million. We can store a trillion. I think we're good. Uh, and also your max input output, does it tell me? Uh, that would be on the, if we looked at the induction doohickey, the max is 52 million RF a tick. So that's the max we can handle. So let's go amp up our reactor now. Because that sounds like a fun time to me. Oh, that's right. One of these days I'll remember that I did this. So if we wanted you running at a burn rate of 40, you should be able to handle that, right? 
I believe that to be true. See how we have a net gain on water? That means we're cool. Okay, and now you're producing enough power for, well, enough steam for a million RF a tick? Close to it? 914? What'd I say, 45 was my cap? Was that about right? 1.02? Let's make it the number 42. 42? That's right, 42. Very good number, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, that'll work. That'll work. That'll work. Quite a lot of RF per tick, and quite a lot of fluid, and plenty of water happening, and you're okay, Mr. Solar Neutron Reactor? Now, you're going to build up what I would call a hefty amount of nuclear waste, um, and you'll build up probably a hefty amount of nuclear waste. What we want to make sure is that we don't build up too much waste such that it fills up in here, because that could be a problem, right? 42... Remember, each one of these pipes holds, what is it, 4,000? So right now, those pipes have stuff in them, and if I broke it, it would be a bad time. I mean, at some point we should check to make sure that this doesn't backflow into here and overheat the reactor at nighttime with that much, you know, millibuckets being produced per tick. We should check that. I mean, daytime will be fine because it'll probably clear up the backlog faster. I should probably just sit here and wait and see what happens. Because if, if, if we run into a situation where we back stuff, see, we're starting to back stuff this guy. So he's getting filled up. And I guess we're going to have to calculate how long we can make it through the night without both this tank and this tank filling up. I'm gonna do this off camera and we'll come back. All right, so it's midnight-ish. And we're at 33%. So my gut tells me that we should have no problem making it to daytime before this waste barrel fills up. And then once this waste barrel if it were to fill up, we would have plenty of room in here still too, but I don't think we'll get there. So we're about to hit daytime here, or so it seems. And we're around 72% full, which jives with exactly what you would expect based on the previous fullness. Uh, so I basically waited an entire Minecraft night to see if this would start to overflow. Now what should happen shortly thereafter uh, is as soon as the sun comes up and this guy activates, we'll start seeing polonium coming in. And the next thing to validate, and this is important, is that we process all this polonium throughout the day and clear out the backlog fully before night hits. Otherwise, we will have a net gain of radioactive waste and eventually it will back stuff. So if you're trying to monitor and make sure things are gonna to be totally safe to run, keep an eye on it and make sure that before the end of the day, this thing completely burns up all its polonium, right? So see how it's quickly processing now? So in theory, this should drop pretty rapidly. And the question is, will it drop down to zero before night hits? If it hits zero before night, which we can already tell it's going to, right? We already know it's gonna, based on how quickly it's going down. Had it not, it would mean that tomorrow there would be a little bit more waste, and the next day it would be a little bit more waste, and the next day it would be a little bit more waste, and eventually it would be overflowed. So yes, we can say with relative confidence, considering we're dropped down to 40% now, and it's barely morning, we're good. And now we can see the tank is empty, but don't forget, there's a little backlog in here too, but I think we'll be fine. It's reasonable to assume that we're cool, right? Actually, maybe we burned through all that backlog already. That's also possible. Sweet. All right, so with that taken care of, now we know this nuclear reactor, in theory, can run forever. There is literally nothing stopping it from just keep on going. The one thing we will probably want to do is remove this throttle. Boop. He is now requesting 300,000 RF a tick, which we're happily providing. Because uh, this guy's capable of transmitting, what I say, 54 million? So, yeah, we're fine, right? So we have an input of close to a million. We have an output of 200,000. We're pretty good here, right? I mean, I'm going to say. I'm going to say, yeah, we're pretty much in good shape. 
And you're producing, you know, 200-something thousand, so that's nice. Oh, yeah, sulfur. That's what we needed. We need more sulfur. That's what we need. We better get sulfur on them to do, right? How are you? Are you done? You are. Reset, config, new filter, tag, uh, four doors, sulfur with a U, I presume? And now start, and you've got 158. Not great, not terrible. Luckily, we get, like, you know, a smidgen. But that should help this thing cook up again. Now, you're doing what? This? Yeah, let's get some speed upgrades in you, if you don't mind. Ugh, we're missing that stuff again. Uh, I want to show you guys something with... There's a little pro tip. Crafters accept speed upgrades. So I think this is the crafter for the pulverizer. So what's happening is the pulverizer... It, the crafter is only giving it stuff every so often, right? A little bit at a time. If we want that to be faster, we can throw a few speed upgrades in there. Okay, usually two is enough. Uh, but sometimes all four is necessary. And now we'll be able to insert items a lot faster. Uh, provided, of course, you have any. Uh, also, this is doing 32 at a time, I forgot. So yes. So we probably don't necessarily need it for this. But it's nice. Um, I might want you... You make sulfur dust in a pulverizer and that's it. You work in, so I could make you with water, oxygen, and charcoal. That might not be a bad plan. Might not be a bad plan. We might want to look into this. We might want to look into this, but I did promise that we would look at a cobble work soon, which is why I've had this stuff in JEI in the top left here for so stinking long. I might go Material Stonework Factory, because Industrial Foregoing is in the pack now, and we can kind of play with that a little bit. But what really counts is we have 16 billion RF, so that's cool. What if we did this? Because we are definitely having a problem with sulfur. So what if I told you to interface export charcoal, and you keep in stock 32 charcoal? Boom. Charcoal for days. Man. Eh? Okay. Uh, and then what did we need? Uh, so in order to make sulfur dust, we're going to need a pressurized reaction chamber. Uh, da, 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 da. Cool. And a little bit of you. Come on. I thought you were going to make one for me. There you are. And what if we went into our compact machine and helped out with this a little bit? So what do we need? Uh, what we need for pressurized reaction chamber, uh, well, for sulfur, is we need charcoal in with water and oxygen. Okay, so that sounds like a job for this position right here. So it does. So it does indeed. Uh, and you could have fluid input, water, and oxygen. And what we could have here then is an ender chest, which at this point I should really just automate the process of. Because I think you know how to make everything else. Or at least have access to everything else. Ender chest. Cool. And maybe we want another ender chest. Okay. And then let's put the ender chest here. Oh, what did I click? I clicked you. 
I didn't mean to click him. We put the under chest here. But color him discolor. And then an under chest here that can sort. Okay. Now on the up, you're going to, but we want a filter for charcoal. Remember, you can configure these in advance. So on the up, you're going to filter. I feel like there's already a white channel for items. Yeah, there is. Something, something got moved. Probably potatoes. Yes, potatoes. I was correct. Okay, cool. Smart die is smart. So how about uh, we'll make you the black channel because it's charcoal. That works for me. Okay, and then over here, um, I'm going to configure you in advance on the black channel for insert, and then boom, and now you should be getting charcoal. Nice. Oh, and also you need power. That works, right? Okay. And then mechanism. These guys. Back in. This is becoming my, like, miscellaneous do all the things room. Oh, look at you. Sulfur dust and hydrogen. Nice. Uh, now, I wouldn't mind the hydrogen doing a thing where he got voided. Now, my concern is that I'm going to need a tank to do that because I don't think I can void in the machine directly. Uh, what I could do is run pipe. Nah, I'm just going to void it in the machine. Yeah, we're just going to do that. That's what we're going to do. We're going to get a tank because I'm pretty sure I can void in the chemical tank, right? Dumping excess. Perfect. And then what I would like you to do, if I put you down there, you're going to connect. But on um, side config for gases, I don't want you to do anything. Okay. Uh, but then on the right, you can input. And you on the front for gases can output. And that would be cool. And now you're going to dump excess. So you'll build up 64 buckets worth of hydrogen and then void the excess. Sweet. And then for items, output eject on. And now all your sulfur is going in here. How cool is that? And we're using charcoal, which is nice. Now, are you keeping charcoal in stock or are you a problem? Uh, on the up, let's make sure that you're configured for eight items at a time, which should be sufficient. That works for me. Are you having oxygen problems, buddy? If you can't keep up with the oxygen demand, you're gonna need some, you're gonna need some upgrades. Boom and boom. I like to usually have 32 of these in stock, just, you know, once I run low, I'll make them so that they're ready for next time. So what I'll do is I'll make sure that Mr. Electrolytic Separator gets all the energies, but I'm only going to give you half the speed upgrades for now, and we'll see how you do. Using 2.56 thousand R of a tick. Are you keeping up now? Maybe a net gain? I'm going to say yes to a net gain on that. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. Interesting. Now, do I want to turn this off? Maybe. Let's try something. Redstone detection normal means you need a redstone signal. <laughs> So if I got a transmitter and a receiver, and you're both channel one, transmitter, transmitter, and transmitter? Oh, how do I have three of these transmitters? I don't know. 
Well, let's get a receiver. And you know what I'm going to want is a transmitter? Because I want a new channel. There we go, channel six, right? Channel negative one. Why are you being weird about the shift click? Channel set to seven? All right, as long as you're both on the same channel. Sweet. All right, uh, what I can do is we can measure the amount of sulfur we have. So we currently have six, right? I would like you to stop exporting sulfur for a minute. So let's only work with redstone signal for just a moment, okay? What I'm gonna do is make a detector from refined storage. And what the detector does is it detects <laughs> stuff. And you could have a transmitter on channel seven and what I would like you to do is emit signal when amount is under 64 sulfur. Let's make it 256. Well, let's start with 64. All right, so see how it's emitting a redstone signal now? So if we pop into here, you don't have any sides, do you? <laughs> That'd be a problem. But not that big a one. Because I've got magic -y redstone stuff. Input? So see how he's on right now? See how he's off right now? This means that he's getting a redstone signal. The fact that the, the laser's on means that he's working. And then you... So see how he's running now? Okay. Now once we build up 64 sulfur in the refined storage system, it should turn off in theory. I guess we'll find out. Come on. Come on. Do we not put the sulfur or what? We still only have five. Why do we only have five? Are you outputting? Where's all my sulfur going? Oh, it's sulfur dust, isn't it? It's making the sulfur dust. Okay, so what we could do is just the... Yeah, no, we definitely want that to be sulfur dust. Okay, so if we do that, now the redstone signal is off. And that's... Off, and this guy's no longer running. Perfect. So now if we came back out here... Okay, and we said, hey, you're allowed to do the thing again. Redstone signal ignored. But we gave you this kind of sulfur dust. You're cool. Okay, now we might want you to have a speed upgrade or two. Just to make sure that you get enough sulfur dust. Right? Now, if we notice that our sulfur dust is getting low, which will probably happen. Temporarily, I'm going to do this, but not that. And then a little bit of this. Now, if we take a look at sulfur dust, what we should see happen... Okay is once the sulfur dust dips below 64, the redstone signal goes on, okay? Now if we look at sulfur dust, it should be gaining. See, it's going up. See, it's going up, okay? Now once it hits 64, it's gonna stop going up. And that's how you don't make unlimited amounts of sulfur. Is that cool? I mean, me personally, I think it's pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool. 
you guys can tell me if I'm wrong. But we should always be right around 64 sulfur at this point. Okay? The only other thing I'm going to need to do is connect my charcoal farm, specifically the charcoal, to the refined storage network. We'll play with that next episode. For now, Doll 20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time and uh, proceed with all the automations. I think that's probably enough mechanism for the time being, uh, at least, you know, a little bit. So I think we should get into our cobble works next time. I also want to check out a couple other mods. I still haven't checked out Elemental Craft. I haven't checked out Pneumatic Craft. There's a ton of things to do. So don't go nowhere because we have a lot more fun stuff to have. For now, take it easy.